let's say that you have a hot water heater, a tankless one, and you don't have a hot or a water softener. Well, I can show you exactly what's going to happen. Your heating elements are going to look like this. Those heating elements, that's all lime scale on them. I'm going to show you how to fix that. So if you have a tankless hot water heater and your hot water is not as hot as it should be or you have very low flow of hot water, chances are you have lime scale buildup on the heating elements and it's actually transitioned into the pipes inside of your hot water heater. And it's actually pretty simple to fix. I'm going to show you, there's four screws, so there's one up here, one up here, one here, and one there to take out. Take those out and then I'll show you exactly what it is that you're going to look for and what you're going to do in order to fix your issue. This is an EcoSmart 27. It's uh, 240 volts, 27 kilowatt um, heating. It takes 112 amps, so it has three breakers. Make sure you turn all three breakers off in your panel box to make it to where it's safer for you and that you do not get shocked. So let's get started. So. It does take effort on your part, but other than a little bit of effort and a little bit of time, it's basically free. All you need, take the heating elements out, so you can see all the lime scale and everything on them, right? Ours has three heating elements. I'll show you when we go back inside. But these two get dirty, right? They get a lot of lime scale on them. This one especially because it's number one. This one, because it's number two, gets a little bit, but number three is rarely ever used because we don't require hot enough temperatures to require all three elements. This bench grinder right here with a wire wheel is going to be how we solve our problem. And then if you have a angle grinder with a wire wheel, which I have over here, you can do the same thing. So let me show you exactly how it works. Basically, we want to take all that off, but we don't want to go too deep because if we go too deep, we are actually going to ruin those heating elements. Move this vice out of the way. All right. So now, all we want to do, we're going to turn this on. for you so that one has been cleaned yes there is some spots that I just can't quite reach even with this angle grinder and the bench grinder those are just some areas that are hard to get however if you look at the comparison right lime scale covered not so much covered remember these are not made of very strong metals so you don't want to sit there and grind on them real hard this is a pretty uh, stiff wire wheel and I don't put any pressure against it. So, let me clean up the other one and then I'll go back inside. They're both clean. All right, so just to show you, you also need to clean out the sections that these heating elements go into, the tubes. You can see in the bottom of this one, sorry about the lighting and the moving camera, but you can see all the sediment in the bottom, all that lime scale. If you look over here, I've already vacuumed it out. Pretty clean. Same thing with this last one. This last one barely had anything in to begin with. The way, so this is actually an old heating element 
that we had a while back. And we keep it for a couple of reasons. One, if I ever want to flush this out, I can put these in here and not hook anything up. And I can still flow water and turn my water valve back on and flow water through. But at the end of it, what I really want you to understand is that lime scale, all it's doing is it's preventing the heat that is being produced by these electric heating elements to be transferred into the water. Therefore, wasting energy, causing plugs in your uh, faucets, most likely. So the more you clean it, the better. We usually clean ours about every two to three months, but I have been neglecting it because of our barn build out here. And therefore, it's a lot dirtier than what it usually is. Generally when ours, when we clean them, they've got a little bit of scale on the actual heating elements, but there's no scale buildup inside the bottom of these tubes like there was this time. And all they use to clean out the bottom, here's like the, is this. So I use a wet vac, wet vac, or a wet dry shop vac, and then I also have a small tube because the hose of my shop vac won't fit in there. And I'll put this down there like so, to the bottom. Put this over it and then I'll use my hand to kind of plug around it to make it to where it'll suck through the hose or through the tube instead of going around it. So let me finish this up and then I'll put it back together. I forgot to show you one other thing. See this connection down here? So basically the water flows in, right? Comes in out of here, comes up, goes down, goes across, comes back up goes across, comes back down to go out. This is to ensure that it flows through all three heating elements. Now there is up top, so let's say that this down here got plugged up with scale. You'll still have water that comes through right here, but it's an indication that when you have this much water flow reduced, you can probably have a problem. Anyways, my point is, is that if you cap the, or sorry, put the hose from the vacuum, for instance, the shop back right here. And then see how there's another vent or another section right here where it goes across. Reach your finger in here to plug that one while you have the hose on here and it'll suck whatever's down in this section, right? It'll suck it through. So I did forget to mention that. Like I said, we clean ours often so we don't really have any buildup in there but the little bit that does end up in there from coming off of the heating elements, I'm sure that if you didn't clean this for a while and you, let's say you have reduced water flow or your hot water pressure is not very high on the hot water side, I would guarantee that you're gonna be plugged somewhere in here if you have a instant hot water heater like this. So just some food for thought. These are all simple fixes. None of this stuff is very hard. Make sure you turn the power off in the panel box to the hot water heater just to ensure that you don't somehow turn it on and electrocute yourself. Other than that, very simple system. Disconnect everything. And even if, let's say you don't, you didn't pay attention to which one goes where, right? If you look right here, it's very obvious. So this one is the shortest, so it has to go to this first element. This one goes to the second element because it's the second longest, and this one goes to the third element. And then as far as down here, it's very obvious because they're right on top of the ones that they go to. If you have questions, put them down below. I'll help you with anything I can. But that should fix any issues that you have with either low pressure on your hot water, coming out of your hot water side of your faucet, or if you have hot water that's not so hot.